I think if it was purely just draft, and I'm not looking at the teams, I would actually choose Singularity's lineup slightly, but I think Danish Bear is going to take it. I think Nyx just... It feels like Batride just unplayable against this hero. I don't know. You'd have to get like a... Maybe itemize against it an earlier BKB than you want. I don't know. It, it just feels really weird to play that hero. Uh, but yeah, I think Danish Bear would probably take game one. Yeah, they've got a lot of uh, options as well. You know, Lifestealer inside of the Nyx Assassin, inside of the Clockwork, big follow-up damage. Uh, a lot of ways to start these fights. So uh, with that said, we're going to hand it over to Annie and Purge for uh, our game one of this best of three series. All right, hello everyone. We're just waiting for the anime battle screen to be done before we get into these first game of the best of three. And again, elimination on the line. These... Uh, these two teams are not going to make it out of here. One of them is done with their land performance here at Zotac. So, Purge, what are you thinking so far? Uh, I just like that you frame that around which of these two is going to lose, not which of these two is going to move on and continue to do amazing. And I, I just thought that was funny and worth bringing up. I'm doing pretty good, though. I'm excited to see the game. Uh, the bands made me so... I just wanted to see the, all those heroes I got, got banned. I wanted to see them played. I'm like, oh, these heroes that are uh, buffed slightly... But seen as bad, I wanted to see them get played, and uh, at least we'll see Phoenix. But uh, looking at the draft-wise, I, I feel like the Radiant team has a bigger advantage because um, things like Silencer is good against Phoenix, the Nyx is really good against Bat. They have really good disables now that can kind of prevent um, Singularity from moving around. And I feel like until the Razor gets a BKB, it's going to be a little bit hard for Singularity to engage um, against the the bears and take a good fight. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I feel like if the radiant team gets a good early advantage, that they're going to kind of just snowball over singularity. Yeah, absolutely. A lot's going to depend on the lanes and radiant. Again, they drafted to have pretty fluent lanes. They can move around. The Nyx assassin can be rotating mid if he wants to go in for a little bit of a gank. And we'll see. I mean, what is the most important for Danish bears to lock down in singularity? Like, what do they need to keep in check? Uh, Phoenix Ultimate is definitely a big one that can be really impactful. Uh, Disruptor Ultimate as well, if you can cr grab a bunch of important heroes in there, that'd be very good for them. Um, or getting heroes outside of the cogs, basically, because uh, Clockwork's cogs are a huge nuisance towards um, um, anybody that's trying to maneuver around the fight, basically. So uh, I think that could be impactful. Uh, but really, who, who initiates first, I think is the big thing. All right, so we'll see everyone going down to their respective lanes here. Rune's going to be pretty even 1-1 one, one scrap. Nothing too crazy, but looks like down bottom, Peito's going to be looking in for that pull, just going harassing back Ace. And, well, Ace just going to be smacking away at him, and they do have Noya there as well. Yeah, he does really doesn't want to get stunned here, but it's going to be kind of hard. Uh, very smart of him to walk around the tree line. It's going to mess the creeps up a little bit, but as long as they stay aggroed to him a little, then this will be okay. The whole purpose of this is that he gets a full creep wave. It's going to mess up the, the lane push here for the life stealer and uh, make it a little bit harder for him to last six. He'll have to do it under tower. Yeah, Batrider will have to go and gobble up a little bit of regen just because he does get very low from Noya biting at him. We'll see. He just takes a tango in, and I think that's going to be all we hear from from our Batrider. It's going to be. Oh, he pulls into the ancients. Oh, nice. Oh. Get screwed, bet. <laughs> that's that's tough, actually, because uh, and all these creeps getting into nine now are only going to get fifty experience, fifty percent experience to the Batrider. And we almost saw this happen last game, actually, but the 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 other hero didn't actually pull through. He's going to get this kill, maybe. Oh, okay. impale off the mark, and that means there's probably not enough damage in lockdown. Batrider is still pretty speedy with that three thirty five movement speed, starting with the boot, so he's able to cut himself back in. Meanwhile, mid lane. Already lots of action here as Disruptor's just been hanging out here. Templar Assassin definitely needs help at the early levels. I mean, the, the Nyx did such baller things and then just threw it away with that stun. Because <laughs> if he lands that stun, I'm pretty sure he gets a kill. He would have needed two right clicks, I believe. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Still messing with the bat. Like, he's doing such a good job zoning. This is uh, maybe a little bit of an undervalued place for Nyx Assassin, but he's got tons of base regen. He's getting 4.3 per second base. And so with the one mango, he trades very, very well with opponents. And the Windlace here, he's almost as fast as the Batrider was, too. And Batrider has boots, so he's just completely limiting what Bat does this game. It's uh, really effective. Yep, totally keeping on his heels. We see Disruptor coming in to try to help and stack up camp so Batrider doesn't completely starve. But right now, we've got Ace and the Lifestealer just getting whatever he needs to. Free farming, last hit leading. Checking in towards our mid Templar Assassin. I mean, having a little bit of a rough time since the Disruptor left, but... Once she gets a couple of levels, yeah. it should fix it. This is another place where a core silencer could work, is when um, you do silencer against a TA in the mid lane. But unfortunately for them, the um, 
uh, the, the silencer is easily able to break the refraction. You just cast first the sound and it cuts right through it. Yep. It's gonna be fixing the music there. Oh, that's fine. I'm tr currently yelling at my dog to stop whining <laughs> at me. For similar issues. It's all good. So, I mean, right now we've got up top clockwork just going in, trying to keep things in check. Just goes for a quick little pull through here. And k -Core on the Phoenix. I mean, how do you feel about this Phoenix pick? You talked a little bit about the ultimate being a huge zoning tool, but last time we saw Singularity grab the Phoenix, it really wasn't the most impressive pick. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agreed with what Juan and Andrew said. It does feel weird. It 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 feels like one of these things where the team just super values it. They're like, oh, we feel like we need Phoenix because it gives us really good team fight, which means that in the mid game we can win fights and turn that into a Roche. It could be stuff like that. Um, it's, a, it's just something that they genuinely believe in as a, as a patch thing. So it's probably something like that because on paper uh, the the bears have way better heroes to counter. We'll see. Going in towards the mid lane, Nisha gonna get those refraction charges burned down. The support silencer being really helpful. And again, you talk about comfort picks. Rise on that support silencer is something we've seen a lot out of Danish bears. And similarly, the clockwork being run still in that three position. Uh, in the last couple of patches, we've seen more and more clockworks going for that roaming four. A little bit slower on levels, but not as much pressure to land those amazing initiations and get that farm. And either way, Silencer's just doing a really good job um, creating space by, by pressuring the lanes. Because they don't want the TA to get out of control, and the other supports are doing a good job. Oh, oh they're going to get him. That rider finally goes down as luck ran out, and Noya gets that much-needed kill. Wishing he got it a couple minutes earlier, but still works. And now 747 does end up getting the kill on Nisha in the mid lane. Up top, Clockwork initiated, so action all around the map here. Level 6s haven't even started to come out yet, and things are already getting crazy. Yeah, it's a little bit hard for them to, to find those initiations sometimes. Like, Silencer and Nyx are not typical 4s, really, in that they're it's difficult for them to execute their kills. But they're they're making it work, and it's definitely impacting me. This is a 2,000 gold advantage right now for the Danish Bears, so... Yeah, looking it's to even a that really up, good start. Mid lane, you do have a smoked up Disruptor coming in, but... Lena just going to be self clearing up, and there's really not much Disruptor can do against that. Just going to get pinged out as Hesta Joe makes his way through the river. Man, That's Ace. a level four. Yep, glimpse back, keeping Clockwork zone now. Lena gets a chance just to solo down this Disruptor. Should be able to find the kill. Disruptor just trying to cut his way through, but does end up going down. Meanwhile, Ace goes and grabs a solo kill, so still feeling good overall for the Radiant. This is looking really bad for Singularity. I feel like they're they're losing this game harder than they should. I mean, part of that is that they have good lane matchups, but I just feel like the Danish Bears are getting way more out of those heroes. Like, Nyx Assassin was solo zoning the Batrider, for God's sake, and Silencer was pressuring mid, but he's still level 4, and their off lane is 4. They're just making every single one of their lanes work while doing lots of little things that make it harder for Singularity to catch up, like blocking camps. Uh, with that said, there is a lot of stacks here, um, which could help the TA a lot. Um, but I think she's got to be the one to, to turn some kills into this game because right now it's just looking dangerous for them to take any fights in the mid game. Yeah, it's just so difficult for Nisha to actually get up and get farming and be aggressive because 747 can just sit back with that extreme attack range and just burn down refraction charges. So Nisha definitely having to play safe and that Disruptor's help has been super invaluable. But we'll see when... Uh Singularity start to get going. Down bottom, another intel onto the Batrider. He's just going to go try for the TP out. Is the damage going to be there? It looks like not quite. And a TP in for the Phoenix. It's going to be sitting back, watching everything burn, because Ace is getting some serious farm down here. 37, 38 last hits now. Yeah, I actually thought that the uh, Batrider messed up his TP, and that was him teleporting to the right <laughs> by the tower. <laughs> uh, kind of surprised me there. But yeah, Ace, uh, pretty, pretty standard for him to get this many last hits. He's going to go for a Midas this game, interestingly. Um, maybe because he feels like he won't be able to compete as well against the Razor in the early fights. So maybe he's just worried about um, accelerating his farm to justify making up for that. Yep, definitely not trying to get up and scrap as early as possible. Thinking about the late game, thinking about making himself useful. And I mean, how does the Radiant in general fare into the late game? It's still going to be really good. I mean, Global Silence obviously peaks off as people buy things like BKBs, but um, it still forces a lot of supports in a really bad position, especially if you initiate at the proper time. Mm -hmm. And they've also got Nyx to look for kills. They've got Clockwork hooks. I, I feel like they have a lot of really good options uh, scaling into the late. Absolutely. Hesta Joe just feeling no pressure at all here on this offlane Clockwork. He hasn't really received any ganks or rotations, but still just totally taking care of himself. And now hits that 6, so he does have the hook shot. 
Might want to start moving with his team soon. Do you think he's going to stick yeah. around and farm more, or is he ready to go? Oh, hell no. If he is, I'm going to flame him. Um, <laughs> but pretty much every clockwork that hits six, you hit the base to heal because you're usually out of mana. And then you buy a smoke and go somewhere and get something done. Maybe skip the smoke. But um, he definitely needs to look around for a hookshot. Probably should play around the Lina. That'd be the easiest kill because she has tons of damage and ranged. Whereas if she plays around uh, like Life Stealer, he'd have to get caught in the cogs as well. So, um, yeah, looking like he's going to head towards the mid lane and try to set up with the mm -hmm. Bottom lane, Kekor could be in some trouble. Icarus dive away. Looks like Noya's gonna keep the chase up, but may just have to back out. He's gonna get clipped by a fire spirit there, but the TP in from our disruptor here might slow things down. Global Silence committed, Rise still taking a ton of damage, and now with Peitos coming in, it's looking grim. Flame break off the mark, but Exotic Deer, he's hunting, and he will find the kill onto that support silencer. Noya just gonna be TPing out, and it will be completed. Exotic Deer gets a big bushel of damage to go farm with, but that initiation was not as clean as I was expecting from Danish Bears. Yeah. Uh, the Clockwork's ready to hookshot in the mid lane as well. See if they can land it. If he can catch him, he oh. okay, does get him. Yep, goes in, traps him in the cogs. Ace making the rotation on through, and they just blow up that TA. Those refraction charges just got burned right away now. Batrider's here trying to seek some revenge, but Ace is still fighting all the way up and through this. Exotic Deer has that static link running. Stealing up a good amount of damage. Now the Phoenix trapped by the cogs. Hesta Joe makes it down to the right side of the river, and it looks like it's going to be a big stalemate. A couple of spells used, but in the end, no more blood. Yeah, it was really good for, for Danish bears there. Um, killing the TA, they get some tower damage in, they escape with the cogs. I think they'll be happy with that, because it's forcing a lot of rotations out of singularity. First, all five of them go to the bot lane to try to defend. They kill a silencer, good for them. But then they all have to run mid, and in the meantime, some people on Danish bears are still farming. Which means that they should be maximizing gold collection by doing these things. And uh, the, the tower damage is also hugely in their favor on the mid lane. And once they kill that, it makes it so much easier. So that's definitely the big target there for them, is that they kill as many towers as possible. That's less free sentry wards, basically. And it should make it easier for their gank heroes, like Clockwork and Nyx, to keep getting kills. Yep, speaking of Clockwork, Hesta Joe just kind of rotating around the jungle, pinging out what he's seeing, but without anyone else there, it's going to be pretty difficult to initiate. Now Kcor under the tower, getting shoot on by Ace. Phoenix just goes for that long-range Icarus dive, but does not have a TP. So it's just going to be him uh, running for his life, trying to fly away. There will be a glimpse back, but, well, it's just going to be helping that you Clockwork set up. And yeah, Hesta Joe just takes that opportunity, goes in and snaps up that Disruptor. <laughs> I bet he's wishing he didn't participate in that one. Hey, I tried to glimpse him back to make sure that the Phoenix lived longer, but did not work. Battery salt was used, and then he just had to turn that into another kill. Gets a double out of it. That's really good for Clock. Yeah, Hester Joe having a pretty nice game here. Almost done with that blade mail here, and only 10 minutes in now. Down bottom, Ace trying to initiate onto our Batwetter. He goes for the TP, but is it going to be long enough? Oh, one more hit from Ace. Would have taken him out. And just a little bit more mana, he would have rage for the attack speed. No kill there. Uh, he's almost got his Midas. It's maybe slightly slow, but he did go phase first. Um, Lena going standard build, it looks like probably a Bloodstone and a Shadow Blade is my guess. And the other side, uh, the point that we need to look at is how farmed is TA. Because this should be about the part where TA just kind of accelerates and gets out of control, but her net worth is actually way below the two Radiant Heroes, both the Lifestealer as well as the Lena. So, yes, she can do stacks, but Batrider cleared a lot of those, actually. And I haven't even seen her hit up Ancients too often, um, starting now to do that, so maybe we'll see her net worth get comparable, but... Uh, it's basically just Singularity trying to catch up right now, trying to stabilize their lanes, but it just keeps falling a little flat for them. Yeah, TA is still finishing up those treads, finally gets that last ingredient, but going to be a little bit longer out of her till we start seeing some serious damage, and the Razor's not feeling super crazy strong either, so it's really just down to this Lightstealer to set the pace of the game, and so far these three Radiant Heroes, turns out they just want to go full Divi mid lane, and this tower, not going to be long for this world. Last hit going to Lina. Make her bloodstone a little faster. The two supports are still only level 5, which is definitely a big negative for Danish Bears, but a little bit more fighting. It should be good. Oh, he's going to get this. Nope, never mind. Spiked Carapace not quite lasting long enough to get the Nyx reliable disable, but at least the Clockwork's alive. And he can turn this into a gank now. He's got Hookshot ready. Yeah, he's looking to go in, and I think this is the time where Danish Bears, they just want to be all over the map, keeping Singularity on their toes, because Batrider doesn't have Blink yet. Still about a thousand gold off. They know TA is weak. They know Razor doesn't really want to fight without many of his items up. So this is a yeah. good time to strike. And up top, it looks like Exotic Deer is going to be targeted. They get the Impale. Hookshot to follow up. Top him in the cogs. Now Phoenix is there, but still no Supernova off of him. So it looks like Kcor is actually in some serious trouble. Does get the Icarus dive out and well, no Hookshot to follow up. So 
probably letting Phoenix off with a warning here. Down bottom, though. Oh, he's, he's looking for him. Yep, yeah, he's in that front creep. They're just gonna run so this in. He's gonna get the Phoenix. He might just hit him here. Yeah, that's a killer. Yeah. Chase him down slowly. Now back down to the bottom rise. This time will go down. Pops off a silence right before he goes in. Laguna Blade takes out Disruptor, so they're making it up in terms of little support kills, but Nisha is still feeling really good about snapping up some of that gold. Finally starting to get that damage that we all know early game TA can produce. Yeah, I'm still not super confident in Singularity's chances right now, though. 6,000 gold advantage for the Radiant team, and yeah, they're getting some kills, but they're still losing map control. They're feeling easily pressured. The Phoenix is still not sick, so still no Supernova. And that's just a place where that hero sucks, honestly. Like, if you don't have Supernova, Phoenix has so many vulnerabilities. Yeah, you Danish can see. bears are just outplaying their opponents. I'll just TP in and then be forced to Icarus dive away from a fight. Now Hesta Joe is going to get dragged back, but again, takes that opportunity. Just goes straight back in, hook shots onto the Disruptor, and this poor guy is so squishy. Will eventually go down. Hesta Joe oh takes credit for that. Now Razor not able to find the kill on Hesta Joe with that plasma field. And he's able to TP out. That was very close for comfort, but Exotic Deer still finds nothing. Hey, he maxed the plasma field, uh, plasma field damage, but it just wasn't quite enough. It really sucks for him. Maybe he should have gone closer and gone for like a Eye of the Storm right click thing, but he thought he would get him with the double hit. And that's just a, a reaction to Clockwork getting so many kills and so many levels that he just survived through something he probably shouldn't have. So Singularity is trying to stabilize, but they're still not doing some coordinated ganks. And honestly, they just don't have the best ability. Like, I think their best move is maybe like Smoke with Disruptor, Phoenix, Batrider or something and maybe a Razor or TA and just blow somebody up. They have to run at somebody, use way too many skills to get kills, but they have to do that right now because they're so far behind. Yeah, net worth starting to get uh, a little bit spooky now. Next Assassin going to be going in. We'll get glimpsed back as they do have a sentry ward here, so good heads up play there from the Dire. We'll prevent another death on the Disruptor, but you can still feel Singularity just completely herded here. Now Nisha going to get hookshot down bottom. They're breaking those refraction charges. Now she's totally vulnerable. Goes in for the melds. Do they have anything? And just waiting on that light strike array. Razor comes down, trying to offer some aid. Now they do get Templar Assassin a little bit lower, but now they've got to worry about retaliation. Phoenix goes in with that supernova. Just trying to zone back Hesta Joe, and it looks like it will be successful to push Danish Bears back for now, but they're still up and fighting. Glimpse going to be coming in. They do isolate down the clockwork. It's going to be a pretty big kill, keeping Hester Joe in check. But now Noya wants to find the follow-up, the impale off the mark, and they can't reconnect onto that Razor. Rise still chasing forward, but they're not able to find anything there. So good movement by Singularity. Yeah, they weaved in and out of that fight pretty well. Uh, the Phoenix felt a little bit ineffective, but um, he did contribute some to damage. Uh, helped kept his allies alive, and the TA helping out with that last kill that was very beneficial for them. So. Helps a little, but in the meantime, life stealers are still farming crazy fast top. And this is definitely one of the weaknesses for like a safe lane oh, razor. Oh, Batrider's so close to his blink. Oh no. Oh man, 50 gold. 50 gold that off of that really blink. Sucks. That was a couple of creeps difference, but now he's got to sit back 30 seconds in the well and then another minute or so to farm it up. So that just really de delays Singularity's uh, gank potential. Yeah, that's not good at all. So at this point, um, they did at least spot that the Infest came. I don't know if they saw that it was on Clockwork or Nyx, but oh. uh, they'll find out very soon. Yeah, Hester Joe wants to go straight in. Sentry dropped, but oh my god, Disruptor, that that's so not going to save you. Yeah, they go in. Now there is a TA there ready to do some serious damage. A Meld Strike comes forward, but Noya is going to be earning back up. An Exotic Deer finds himself in a very precarious situation here. Triangulated in, and now there's a Dragon Slave going in. Exotic Deer getting low. Got a ton of damage and sprays out one last plasma field, but does still go down. Meanwhile, Lena just focusing down everyone she possibly can. Global Silence comes in as they want to continue to find a full wipe here. They do end up losing their Lena. Petos able to get back over this cliff. Now TP is coming forward as Disruptor respawns. The first casualty of this fight is back in just to go down right again. That is... That's rough, man. <laughs> they baited the rage out, and now he cannot use rage again. Very worth it. Ugh. Man, Singularity is definitely falling very fast here. Um, I was a little surprised the Sentry Ward spotted out the gank. Um, they oh. put that down to try to protect against the Nyx, but it was a little bit too delayed. Can they finish Templar? They're looking for it. Hester Joe is still 10 seconds on that hook shot. Just going to try to keep eyes on the girl. They see her walking towards this cliff, but looks like they'll just regroup for now. I mean, the good thing right now about Danish Bears is they're not super ultimate reliant. 
The hookshot and the clockwork, great initiation tool. The global silence is needed for big fights, but, you know, just Lena and Nyx, they can combo up and find a couple of kills themselves without using any ultimates. Yeah, yeah, that's what's cool about their draft. Lena plus any of their heroes really are really effective, either the Nyx or the clockwork. It's like taking two heroes, putting them in the same lane. They're both off lane heroes, and honestly, they both kind of feel fulfill similar roles, but they have different strengths and weaknesses. Oh, hook like shot it. in, another hit and a miss, or rather a, a connect from Hesta Joey. Traps Nisha in the cogs. They've got dust this time, so her meld's not going to be doing anything crazy. She gets pushed back and dies immediately now. Kcore comes back in. This Phoenix does manage to get off the supernova, but it's just going to be a moment of Radiance time before they burn that down as well. It does buy time for the Razor to TP out on the back lines. That was the shortest Phoenix Saga I've seen in my whole life, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, that was just kind of a gimme. He kind of flies in a little bit late, doesn't really offer much survivability, and, you know, just hits R, but there's no reason my Radiant couldn't immediately turn their focus to it. Now, Ace yeah. will get caught here. He's going to get dragged into that static storm, but just going to be TPing straight on out. They are, uh, they are able to break it. Little glimpse back there, but Ace just going to be infesting into some creeps. And Ooh, they know which one, too. Yeah, they do know which one, but the rest of the Radiant, they're still fighting, scrapping it up together on this oh, cliff. Phoenix... Oh, gets so close to death. Kcore barely lives. Okay. Well, they get the ace kill. The link really helping out shows which creep he's in. They could deny it. He didn't even have to waste Eye of the Storm. So that was a huge kill for them, at least. But they still lose their tier two. <laughs> yep, he called out that build perfectly. Just Bloodstone into Shadow Blade, and that Lena is shaping up real nicely, still just dominating the net worth chart. Almost 10k net worth on her at 18 minutes in. That's Lena, man. You just cast your spells and creeps die, and then you farm more creeps and buy more items, and it's just going to keep going. There's still going to be a little bit of a TA threat because Lena has weak armor, but the faster she gets past her boots of travel, maybe buys a Shiva's afterwards, perhaps. There's lots of options, but once she gets an armor item or maybe a Yule's or something, then TA is going to stop being so much of a threat. And even then, I'm, I, I wouldn't be worried if I was Lena right now. She's 3k ahead of the TA. Aww. Disruptor, I mean, gets a second chance at life here. The impale's off the mark. Negative Urn doing some damage, and looks like, yeah, he's let off with a warning this time. Exotic Deer moves forward. Has to Joe clips him a little bit there with that battery assault, but just going back, and Psionic Trap popped. Nisha just wants to go far, man. Doesn't want any trouble. Probably also like to fight, though, because this hero is a decent at taking fights, but... 747 doing the smart thing, pushing out the bot lane that forces reactions from Singularity, and then uh, the rest of the team can go take fights in other places, so at least wait until a good time to engage. Yep, they do so know she's here. They do have that ward there, but still. I mean, Singularity's initiation, y you think, you know, bat, blink, lasso, it's great, but there's just so much immediate reaction coming out of Danish Bear as Batrider will almost assuredly die if he goes for those YOLO picks. It all depends how spread out they are. I mean, even something like Global Silence can shut that down. Because it doesn't matter where the silencer is. If somebody gets lassoed and you Global Silence, then that person's probably not going to die until after the lasso ends. Which, in some cases, could be their salvation. Could be Nyx going invis, spiked carapace, lifestealer rage. They Their draft is just so good against Singularity, so I really like it. So, going to go for a big coordinated fight. Five heroes on the way. Yep, big smoke in. They got that infest going. Nisha just... Wanders into these trees and, well, looks like she's playing a little ring around the rosy and might just be able to TP out cleanly. Yeah, they don't see her. They can't catch her. So lots of time wasted there for Danish bears. But, I mean, the net worth still tells the story here. Yeah, I, I didn't see when the smoke broke, but with that ward on the side jungle, I think the smoke broke, and that was why TA blinked away. They just pinged it now. They realized that she had an observer ward, and she blinked a very tricky way as well going forward uh, towards the bottom left or the bottom right. So... She gets out fine. Um, wasted smoke for the Danish bears, but really, it's not a big deal. They're just going to go pressure the tier two. Yep, finally, some pressure from Singularity onto this tier one. It's uh, been a long time coming. They've got Disruptor kind of positioned here as a little tripod, trying to see if anyone's teeping into the shrine. So it looks like finally a tier one tower will fall. It's going to glimpse. Yeah, they're going in. And oh, well, immediate kill. silence. There is going to be that infested Nick. so it's a two-for-one surprise if they can lock him down. The global silence comes in, though, and now Ace is hungry. Double man impale. Ace just going to work in the Bat Rider. There is going to be a Phoenix zips off and in. Goes for the Sunray, trying to keep his teammates alive, but there's 747 just laying in. It looks like this egg not going to be finished off by Ace. He does have to run. Still trying to go for the kill onto Nisha. Hook shot in from Hesta Joe. They've got everyone doing the damage they need. Rise still barely alive. Burning low. Nisha on the cliff. Goes in front of the refraction, is able to blink down, but she's the lone survivor. And it's not looking like she's got long here. That is a full five-man wipe 
from Danish Bears, and they don't lose a goddamn hero. Yeah, was, I think it was way too greedy by the Batrider there. He wanted to hold his lasso, maybe waiting for the Life Stealer afterwards if he expected him. But the fact that Life Stealer was able to auto attack and Global Silence and the Nyx stun, it made it so much harder. Whereas at least maybe if he lassoes the Nyx, they don't have to deal with Spike, Carapace, Impale, things like that. So it's it's like they burned all their a lot of their ultimates, but they didn't want to burn everything. And I think it would have been just better if they got a kill, because uh, at least then there's maybe less kite potential from their from the enemy team. So it should have been a little bit better executed, but it was, it was definitely a cool move. Yeah, Singularity, I mean, really grasping at straws. You can see the net worth slowly slipping out of their control, and there's about to be a Roche amplifying things for the Radiant. I mean, what are the weaknesses right now in Danish Bear's draft and play style that Singularity can actually get in there and exploit? Um, They have some low armor heroes, I guess, is, is definitely one of them. But they've got pretty good team fight, which kind of offsets what Singularity's kind of bringing. I just feel like the some of the heroes that Singularity grabbed didn't really work out in the end. The Life Stealer or the the Razor, for example, putting Razor in the safe lane just doesn't work out so well because he's also supposed to win his lane by a bit. Like his his late game situations are all right, and his mid game situations are all right, but you kind of need to snowball a little bit. And he certainly can't farm anywhere near what a what Alina does, and he's not either matching the the Life Stealer who went Midas. So it's just this like weird position where their fights are like decent but not amazing and their opponents have better gank and just about as good a team fight. So with this gold disadvantage, it just makes it really hard for Singularity to, to take some of the abusable things they have and make something good happen. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The Razor just had a really tough time and he was only against a clock, like just a completely solo clock. Disruptor did have to focus in towards the mid, helping that TA, so wasn't able to have that true try lane, but Still, Razor just really under farm, still working on his Hurricane Pike, and now things about to get ugly as there's a double man hook shot in. Hesta Joe traps to TP out attempt from Exotic Deer, but it gets canceled immediately. Noya on the cliff looking to scout things out. Batrider sees the Nyx Assassin, but the Impale still comes through. They lock down the Razor. Now they don't have that static storm for 30 more seconds. Razor's in the ground for almost a minute without any buyback and singularity. They're just running out of tools to take this game, or at least hold it out longer. 747 just. 18 bloodstone charges ready to start laying into some structures. Noya now is going to get jumped on but immediately responds with that impale. They can't seem to catch him out now. A nice lasso comes in but Laguna Blade dropped that. Batrider's done for almost a minute. Global Silence comes in. Has to show backing up. Still alive. Disruptor comes forward but no ult coming out of him. They lock down the TA and that's going to be everyone but Disruptor dead. As this high ground is well, sufficiently pushed. Looks like at least a tier 3 if not a full set of racks. Yeah, the, the the Phoenix got a little bit too close there. He was uh, Sun Rain doing a ton of damage with it, but he walked all the way into melee range. He got cogged in with the Global Silence, and he wasn't able to buy himself a couple seconds to also get a Supernova off. So just a little bit of a disconnect there. I mean, obviously they don't want to take a fight because they had dead heroes, but they did go for a fight and uh, certainly didn't work out. It's looking like we could have a real quick game one of this best of three. Hesta Joe just pushing up so far with that blade mail, trying to do as much work as possible onto this Phoenix, who is able to egg and just stay hidden for a little bit. Glimps back in onto Hesta Joe. He may give his life for this. Does get clipped by that supernova blast, but now 747 just goes straight forward. Laguna blades down that razor. It's uh it's yucky there. K Core playing just a scrap of life. Does end up going down now. Rise super low. May end up burning Noya as well. They got that carapace going, holding Batrider in place. Well, Lena just trying to solo down that disruptor, making a lot of space, but she herself only burns the Aegis now. We'll see if she can actually escape out of this. Looks like 747 may take a tumble, but still so much work done by Danish Bears in this last push. Yeah, it was, uh, at least they got the, the Aegis Lena kill, but Danish Bears just is playing with their food right now is what it looks like. They're perfectly kiting their opponents, making them waste their cooldowns and they got the clockwork, but it's it's basically like they're only getting kills because of overdiving and, and like major mistakes that Danish Bears are only making because they feel so far ahead this game. Yeah, Hesta Joe is just kind of tangling around here behind the Ancient and then got glimpsed, glimpsed back in after he wanted out. So we'll see if they can just kind of recoup this and take this off the next fight. But if not, I mean, Roshan will be up in you know, six, seven minutes. We'll see if that's going to be Radiant's next point of attention. It's definitely a good place to go. I mean, kill Shrines first, then take Roche. Once you kill Shrines, um, it's so much more difficult for Singularity to not get outmaneuvered.
when they do decide to take Roche. Like, you can have a TA trap in there and anywhere else in the area, but as soon as your opponents see you across the map pushing up bottom, for example, you just take Roche because it takes you 30 seconds to walk across the map. So something that um, Danish Bears should be able to abuse and help close out the, the next racks and likely the game. So basically, Singularity needs to take a fight right now and they need to win it. Well, they're gonna try. 747, very, very close in here. Hookshot comes forward. Disruptor will be forced oh, out, but it doesn't even seem to matter. Two heroes evaporated. Now, Global's down. Singularity might be able to use that to their advantage, but it's looking like they're just on full damage control mode. Trying to make sure they don't lose their cores, but with Razor caught out here, Exotic Deer is, uh, well, he's in a sticky situation. Does end up going down. Buybacks, very few and far between. Phoenix now clipped down. Does Manny barely manage to live, but then just gets popped by the silencer, so... Looks like another set of racks coming out here. It's only TA left to defend. When Disruptor comes up, he does have the Static Storm, so... Maybe the world's clutchest initiation can save this game, but it's it's looking really tricky. It is looking pretty much impossible as far as I'm concerned. Lots of teamfight disable, lots of initiation, vision advantage. Uh, Danish players have everything right now. Singularity would have to put almost all their forces on one or two heroes to, to win a teamfight here. Hookshot back up. We'll see if Hester Joe wants to go for it. Now Batrider's in does have that flaming lasso ready and... Looks like that's going to be enough, just the threat of it. All the heroes respawning for Danish Bears to back off, but they have pretty much total map control at this point. If Singularity leave their base, they are just done, but well, they got to they gotta make some moves. They probably could have finished the game out there, but they're just playing it really safe. Um, Shrine taken, more gold advantage, Roche control. 747 just going right back in with that Shadow Blade. They just want to keep the gas pedal push. They want to end this game right here and... Looks like 747 just spraying out the Shivas, looking for stragglers. Now Batrider comes in, will grab the infested Nyx, but Ace is right there, just starts chewing on the cores. There is going to be a nice zoning ult from the Disruptor, but he's still caught out in the cogs. And that is the story of this game, it's just Hester Joe landing really great hook shots, isolating targets, and there's plenty of damage to back it up. Noya might get burned by that Sunray, but just goes and with that Carapace, it's a brief pause. Nisha still full health. That refraction gonna be burning low pretty soon, and you can see just how easily she melts to all the damage on Danish Bears. And finally, the GG is called Singularity. Now one game down against Danish Bears. And I mean, man, the Radiant looked so clean this game. Yeah, they really did. I think their their lane pressure was fantastic. Just moving the silencer around top into mid, just show up mid, cast Arcane Curse, and all of a sudden TA's advantage of refraction is gone. 